Hey guys and welcome back. In this video we'll be looking at um, file handling. So we divided this video into file opening and processing and the next video we'll cover about how to create and write files. So let's get started. So there's a lot of um, uh, scenarios where it involves for you to use files. For example, we have a lot of different um, types uh, to handle like numerical scientific data processing, uh, commercial data processing, documents, uh, even programming language compilations, and so forth. And all of those are typically stored as a file and therefore it is essential that um, our program can handle uh, by opening, reading, uh, and uh, be able to modify contents or evaluate it and then um, output the results. So in particular, what we want to focus is the numerical scientific data processing. For example, uh, computing um, statistics of the data that we have uh, or finding the trend line, um, like drawing curves or visualization of data, etc. So this, you can see similarities with Excel where we want to handle data and try to formulate um, solutions or trend lines to see um, uh, the way we understand data. Okay. So as you can see here, the steps in processing numerical data is exactly the same as what we've seen in the Excel videos. Basically, we want to be able to open the file, uh, extract the data from the file, um, uh, process the data and uh, output or display the results. So here what we are omitting is uh, step zero about collecting data. Um, so here, for this example, we can assume uh, that we already have the data collected. Um, when it comes to extracting the data, it could be as simple as um, splitting each line in a CSV file uh, or complexing uh, complex scenarios uh, handling XML. Even, even XML files are actually really structured nicely. Uh, probably the most difficult part is handling raw text files. Uh, anyway, we'll come to have a look at um, how we can do this. So, uh, the very basics of uh, opening a file is to use the built-in function open. And uh, we have the very first uh, input requirement is called path. And this is where you specify the location of the file. So if the code is uh, running inside the same folder as where your um, uh, file is, then you only have to um, call the file name and extension as a string. If it is located somewhere else, then you will have to provide the full path name. So if you're working in Windows, it's uh, something like a drive name, colon, slash, uh, some uh, the path to your file. If you're working in a Linux or uh, OS type of environment, then it's going to be something like slash uh, home slash your username, uh, maybe the other way, um, and then just to locate uh, where your file is. Okay, um, and then we have an optional argument called mode. Uh, by default, uh, your mode will be set to read. Um, and later we'll see that when we want to write file, we will have to explicitly say that we want to set the mode to write, um, which is using W. So mode R is the default for reading, um, but you can change to W for write or A to append. So when you open a file to write, then uh, if the file doesn't exist, it's going to create a new file uh, as you specify uh, the name for you. Um, but do note that if you trying to write a file, but the file name already exists in the same folder or the location where you want to save it, then it's going to override it if you have the permission to do so. Uh, append, however, it's going to keep the content of the file and then it's trying to uh, add additional um, lines that you're trying to add on to. Okay? So let's have a look at the syntax. The file handling syntax in Python is really straightforward. Um, open uh, whatever you want to open, 
and what you need to do is store that into a variable so this data it's going to be looking at the file object that you just opened All right so let's do that Okay, let's do one line at a time so if I run this now I have loaded data so if I type data it tells me that uh, this is some text input output wrapper so this is a input output um, object and it has the name called junk.text it tells me the mode as well and it tells me some sort of encoding but don't worry too much about that okay so now we have created uh, opened a file okay so next thing we want to do is see what's inside the very um, simplest way is to use the for loop to iterate through each line that is inside a file okay and so if we run this what's going to happen is it's going to iterate over each line that's uh, in the file uh, and I have asked it to print it uh, and then just close the file Okay, so the junk to text looks like this. I just created on the side, and you can see that it uh, echoes back exactly the same as what we had before. Uh, one note here is that we have put the range from beginning to the last, but not including, because usually in file, although you can't see it, but uh, there is a new line character at the end. Hence, uh, you can see the line going to the next. Okay. And so if I don't have uh, this specification, what we're going to do is double the number of new line characters. Why? Because print function by default will add a new line at the end. So you could either specify by removing the new line character at the end of the text file yourself or ensure that uh, print doesn't add additional new line characters at the end then um, either way we will observe the same behavior okay so let's uh, keep that in there so reading line is um, quite straightforward um, but usually we want to uh, extract data in a bit more uh, understandable way so for example our previous program could be rewritten as such so for uh, now we have lines equals data dot read lines so what we'll do is uncomment that and then we go uh, lines equals data dot read lines this one okay and then instead of going over data we can go lines okay and then this is going to work exactly the same way however um, the advantage here is that uh, it's more explicit about what we're doing and can access lines in arbitrary order so that means I don't have to iterate through one at a time so maybe I want to access uh, line number five or six uh, before I go through each line okay so if I don't uh, use this read lines method associated with this data uh, object um, then I have to go through line at a time okay so that's the advantages but uh, the disadvantage here is that uh, we do have to make sure that we have enough memory space to store all of the contents uh, of the file into our memory space. So because we are using a very small sized text file, this is not a problem and most of the time this should be fine. Uh, but sometimes you have to handle a very large quantity of data. And when we do that, uh, this becomes a problem where you may run out of memory space. Okay, so just be wary with that. Okay. So exactly what does open give us? Well, value returned by open uh, built-in function is an object that behaves like a book. So when you read uh, a paper book, what happens is you start from the very beginning. And as you move along, as you progress, uh, what happens if you have to do something else is you bring a bookmark. Okay. And then you can put it in there so you can return back anytime um, you want. And that's essentially uh, what is happening. So initially, when you first open a file, the bookmark is at the beginning of the book. So now you're pointing at the very beginning of the file. And as you read through the pointer uh, that you have 
are used to go through the file, uh, your bookmark uh, will be shifted as you read lines out of it. Okay, and this idea is the same uh, for open uh, file name with the right uh, mode. Uh, however, in this case, what we do is uh, we create a, a new book and essentially you are writing uh, your own data onto this new book. Okay. So every time you write it, then your bookmark will be at the end of where you finished writing it. Okay. Um, and you can also use the option uh, append uh, for appending at the end of the existing file. Basically what happens is the bookmark will be automatically placed at the end of the file. So here you can start writing uh, more content uh, to this file. Okay. Uh, there are also binary uh, file options. Um, as well, but uh, you don't have to worry about that in this unit. Uh, alternatively, if your um, a file is not located uh, locally, uh, but from the internet, you can also open those as well. So for instance, um, our normal syntax looks like this, but instead uh, we will have to use a library called urllib. Um, this Will allow us to specify a web page and it's going to do all the networking stuff for us so you don't have to worry about what it does um, then you're going to use the url dot request and then we can open url uh, using the url open uh, method associated with it so let's give that a go okay, okay so here it is so here import uh, this library, uh, I have set our um, department homepage as the URL uh, and then we're going to open it and essentially what we're just going to do is print each line what the uh, underlying code looks like and what this will be reading is the HTML uh, content of the web page. So let's run that. So this is going to be quite ugly. And if it ever fetches what? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, okay. So maybe my internet wasn't that great, but so basically what you see here is the HTML content of our departmental homepage. Um, if you have experience with HTML, you will quickly notice that um, we start with the document type. This is HTML. And then we have a bunch of like a uh, data and all the contents. So here you can um, probably see things like Department of Computer Science and Software Engineering, UWA, and all that stuff, right? So you can probably recognize uh, some of the wording here if you actually visit uh, our department homepage. Okay, so this way we can read website contents as well. Okay, and if uh, they have a files uh, as the content, then we'll be reading the file instead of the HTML files. Okay. So that is an alternative way of retrieving uh, contents from online. Okay. So now let's uh, process some data. So that's uh, all for really uh, how to open files. Now what we, what we want to do is use the data that we just retrieved. So uh, we have an example file provided for you, uh, this uh, bubble.txt file, uh, which uh, measures the number of bubbles per minute. Okay? And basically it's uh, divided by uh, data. Um, uh, each column is de days, hours, minutes, and number of bubbles. So day one, at the first hour, at the very first minute, we observed 23 bubbles. And the next one, 53, 18, 83, 82, and so forth. Okay. Uh, and items in line are separated by a tab. Okay. So what we want to do is, all right, what is the mean number of bubbles observed uh, through uh, the whole contents that we have? So what we can do is write up the code to read uh, each line and get the content of the last column and then apply our um, logics there. So this is what the code looks like. So here we've seen that we can open the file like this and we only want the bubbles measure. 
we don't want the days, uh, time, etc., minutes. So uh, we want to keep the bubbles in this particular list. And uh, we have seen this before for line in, in file, uh, data.line.split, because it has been separated by a tab that's also regarded as a space, and therefore each content will be separated um, nicely for us, okay? Because this is already a structured data. Okay. And what we're going to do is convert uh, this input as a type float. Uh, if you know that this is going to be all integers, that is also fine. Um, but in this choice, I have decided to use floats. And so that particular bubble is at data location 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. And then I just add it to my list of bubbles. And finally, I can calculate uh, the average a number of bubbles that we observed, and then we close the file, right? So let's give that a go. Okay, that's the code. So this one is exactly the same as here. Okay, if you have a pilot uh, constraint, add a space there. Okay, run it. And you should uh, get the same value as me using the same file. Basically, the average number of bubbles we observed for this particular recording is 53.316 recurring. Okay, so that's all good. So here, as long as we can extract the correct data that we need to solve the problem, then you shouldn't have a problem um, doing the uh, data processing as well. So. For an exercise, you should try to extend this code by uh, printing the day, hour, and minute of the maximum. Okay, give that a go. Uh, and if you have, uh, if you would like to find the solution or get stuck, uh, do not uh, hesitate to contact me or any of the lab facilitators. We will be able to help you there. Otherwise, uh, we're going to stop here. So in this video, we covered about how to open files as well as data processing. Uh, as we've seen uh, examples, we can even uh, pull data from our website as well. So next up, we're going to be looking at how about creating files uh, with uh, our processed data. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.